the floor of the River Nile, five miles northwest of the pyramids, is Kerdasa, a typical Egyptian village. Most of its 15,000 inhabitants are Copts, or native Christians. Racially, they more nearly resemble the ancient Egyptians than any other people. The girls, while in their teens, often are quite beautiful. Their faces are pleasing, some exceedingly lovely, but after 20, they soon decline. When the Nile is at flood, between July and December, Kardasa is an island. Then it can be reached only by rowboats, even though, curiously enough, the Sahara Desert is less than a mile away. On Saturdays, the villagers journey 15 miles into Cairo to attend the weekly souk, or market, the largest in Egypt. Here, camels, cattle, sheep, goats, donkeys, and water buffalo are sold to the highest bidder. A camel bringing as much as $100, a donkey as little as five. The sheep go into a huddle to petition for less mutton and more wool. And they usually win, for Kardasa prospers from the periodic fleecing they get. Popular among the delicacies of Egypt are its dates. The old men have a few, without risk of blackmail. But as everywhere, the women go to the younger men for most of their dates. Kardasa women do all the shopping for their household. The men are expert spinners and weavers. Though not a few carry swagger sticks for effect, others, however, use them to control their camels when they become excited and obstreperous, oft times dilating their tongues and frothing at the mouth in passionate rage. No village in all Egypt has as spectacular a skyline or as impressive and entertaining marriage festivals as has Kardasa. In the distance are the age-old pyramids. Approaching is a wedding procession. Meantime, the guests and relatives are entertained by professional musicians and a gawazi, or dancing girl, hired by the bride's parents for the occasion. All of the children of the village join in, as might be expected, for music, dancing, and singing are the favorite recreations of the people. Nubian lad lends a dash of color to the scene. But even more distracting is the Gawazi. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you are about to see a Gawazi go woozy. As the dance ends, the procession of the bride approaches. It is the result of a courtship that has been carried on by proxy. The bride and her prospective bridegroom have never seen one another. Their marriage has been arranged by go-betweens, who, after considerable haggling, have agreed upon a suitable dowry of 22 and a half pounds, about $110. For the same price, the husband could buy a camel and two donkeys. At the end of the procession is a two-camel litter bearing the veiled bride. The rear camel has its head thrust down under the litter. Perhaps it represents the husband, for he knoweth not what he doeth, nor where he goeth. Though the girl is an Egyptian, her husband is a Bedouin, 
and therefore a Mohammedan. Even though the Prophet Muhammad condemned music, Bedouins regard it as a satisfying pleasure. To them, a wedding would be funereal without a brass band or without clowns or buffoons in nondescript female attire, imitating gawazi and swordsmen engaged in mock combat. The father of the bridegroom, who is a Bedouin sheikh, better known to Occidentals as a sheik, helps to amuse the guests with his fine horsemanship. Another view of the litter. Take a good look at that rear camel and sympathize with the husband. A closer glimpse of the bride. According to Mohammedan law, she may become one of four wives if the husband so desires. To think that a wife in Egypt costs only $10 more than a camel. Oh, but they let you see the camel. Boys pounding kettle drums bring up the rear of the procession, which eventually arrives at the home of the bridegroom. The bridegroom also displays some horsemanship for the guests, who, after they have partaken of the repast he has provided, return to their respective homes. At sunset, the bridegroom will go to bathe, then to the mosque to pray. On returning to his bride, let us hope they will live happily down there on the floor of the Nile, in the shadow of the pyramid, one of the world's oldest ports of call.